You know, Chinese Australians are the greatest patriots you could hope for in this country. I remember being with Gladys early on in the pandemic. You remember we were down at Box Hill. It was February of 2020. I mean, the pandemic at that stage had not yet hit the rapid escalation in this country that we were seeing in others. But you know, as Chinese Australians who were coming back out of Wuhan and coming back out of China and returning, they saved Australia as much as anyone else in the way that they came home and the way that they took precautions, whether it was here in Melbourne or it was up in Hurstville or up there in Ryde or other parts of the country. I am enormously grateful to the way that Chinese community leaders in Australia worked with the government so carefully during the course of the pandemic and, uh, and played such an important role in those early phases of the pandemic. So, Claire, I agree with you. I mean, Chinese Australians, they're Australians. They're Australians and they're proud about it being Australians and I'm proud of them. I'm proud of what they have done for our country. I'm proud of what they've achieved for our country. And so that's why I draw a sharp and distinct line between the actions of an authoritarian government that is seeking to be coercive against Australia and to interfere in our region and the wonderful Chinese people. Chinese Australians here have family in China. They know what it's like to live under authoritarian government. That's why so many of them have come to Australia in the first place. Gladys herself understands and grieves terribly for what we are seeing in Hong Kong. And that's why the Australian government has stood up for the people of Hong Kong, stood up for the people of Xinjiang, stood up for those who are oppressed in China and stood up for human rights. And there's no group of people in Australia more passionate about standing up for their fellow uh, chi those of Chinese heritage in China who live under that regime. Of course you can ask that as a question. Gladys, are you, are you concerned, do you share concerns about the rise of China? Well, the way I look at it is um, I have come to the country 37 years and I became an Australian citizen 30 years ago. I've got my children born and raised here and I understand now I'm an elected member of the Australian Parliament. My job is to how to make this country a better country. For anyone, for anyone to suggest that Chinese Australians are not Australians is it's Chinese Australians. If anyone suggests that Chinese Australians are not Australians and still have the loyalty and want to do things that is bad for Australia, I think that is offensive, def offensive, divisive, and un-Australian. Yeah. We're not right. saying that. We're asking right. specifically right. asking. Right. Yeah. 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 I, I spent some time in your electorate in recent weeks, and I spoke to Chinese Australian voters there. Many of them said that they were concerned about the rhetoric from your government directed at China, and they said it was making them less likely to vote for you. So. What do you say to them? I mean, how can you reassure those voters? I have been at the pre poll for four solid days. And I can tell you, when you talk to Chinese people in Australia, you don't start by asking whether they are uh, holding a Chinese passport, uh, visiting this place, or come to help their children, to look after their children. Because we do have a lot of Chinese live were Chinese people living in Australia at the moment, but they're still holding a Chinese passport. And I'm not talking about those people, I'm talking about those who pledged loyalty to the country. I have seen a lot of people throughout my three years as a member of parliament at citizenship ceremonies, and I hear them pledge loyalty to Australia. So if anyone suggests Chinese Australians are any different from all other Australians, whether they were born here or not, I think this is offensive, divisive and un-Australian. Very well said, Gladys. Very well said, Gladys. We got time for one more? Yeah. KBS figures show that overseas migration for the year ending June 2021 mm. was the second lowest on record. The only time net migration was lower was at the um, end of World War 